How to write algorithms. This is um, under IEB IT theory, although it's really part of programming, but the um, t questions about algorithms are usually asked in the IT theory exam. When you use variables in a, an algorithm, don't declare them. You, own, you do initialize them though. Some examples are car num gets the value of zero. This is called an assignment because we are putting the value zero into the variable called car num. Um, price gets the value of 9.5. Surname gets the value Masimba. And you can see from the context, from the type of data that is being stored in the variable, the programmer who gets your algorithm will know what sort of um, variable it is. And please note that the error goes from the, from the value towards the variable because we are storing the data in that variable. If you need to use a raise in, a in an algorithm, here we sort of verge on a little bit of, it looks a lot like Java, but it's the clearest way to note it. So you would, you would declare it. So you would put in integer marks 20 for an array of 20 integer marks or string marks array and then in square brackets 100. Um, and here you can see that this does look a lot like Java, but there really isn't another way to note it. So it is allowed in an algorithm. In input, you would go input name, very simple, or input number. You just use the word input, and that would refer to when you use JOption pane.show input dialog in your Java program. Output, you can just use the word display, and then if you want some hard-coded data, you would put, for example, like here, name, colon, quote, in quotes, comma, name, which would be a variable. Or you can say output, or you can say print. It, it really doesn't matter. And as you can see, algorithms are not like Java programming, which is very um, strictly defined if you do not um, respect the um, syntax, a program will not work. Whereas in algorithms, as long as you have the idea that here we want to put something on the screen, you can use the word display or output or print. Totaling and counting or um, calculations, you would say total gets the value total plus counter or count gets the value count plus one. In Java, percent is used to find the remainder of a, of a division. And percent, actually, when we see it in a calculation, we say mod. An example would be that 5 mod 3 gives you 2. Because when you divide 5 by 3, the answer is 1 point something. But if you're doing integer division, it's 1. And the remainder of that division would be 2. In algorithms, we use the word mod. So, for example, we would say result is assigned num mod 2. Div, when we see the word div in an algorithm, it refers to integer division. Remember that in integer division, there are no decimal points in the answer. It's a clear division. And if there is anything behind the decimal, it is just chopped off, truncated, and lost. If statements, if number is greater than zero, then output, the number is positive, else output, the number is negative or zero, end if. And here you see that all the key words have be, of an if statement have been put in capitals. And also anything that belongs inside the if um, block, we indent. And what goes under then is also indented, and whatever goes under else is indented. This makes it very clear that um, what what the what the if statement is doing. And please make sure that your indentation is very neat and clear in your algorithms. If you need to use a switch case, 
you can use case and then the number you're testing would be in here number of um, then one wash and co go go co wash and two and so on there are all the options you don't have to get case one and so on and break like in Java you just go one colon for all the options two colon and so on otherwise would be the default instead of default you can put the word otherwise you can say default if you want I'm sure that would be accepted print incorrect selection and then in case so the value being tested is shown here for loops if you um, need to do a for loop you can use either of these um, constructs you can say for and then your loop counter is count and then it gets the value 1 up to 10 output count would just be an example of what you might do in the for loop and then next that's one way of doing it the other way would be for loop and then your loop counter count from the word from is put in 1 to 10 and then at the end of the for loop don't forget end loop so as you see the loop this is the loop variable shown here or in the second example shown here if you have nested for loops you need to number them so the outer for loop would be for loop 1 and then your counter count 1 from 1 to 10 your inner loop would be for loop 2 count 2 from 1 to 10 you would put over whatever lines of algorithm you have and then end loop 2 and end loop 1 and please note the inner for loop is neatly indented inside the outer for loop in while loops um, if you need to use a while loop you use the keywords while and then your condition note that the condition is not in brackets we just keep writing and then at the bottom of the while loop when you've done all the, the lines of, of algorithms you need you would put end while and please note everything in the while loop is neatly indented a do while loop can be done two ways um, in Java we say do at the top we put our curly brackets and at the bottom we have while and then brackets and semicolon at the end so if you want to stick to that method that's fine um, please note that um, the do like in the example do output please choose between options by entering a or b and then input response and we will make the loop repeat while the response is not A and the response is not B. So for example, if a user is, keeps insisting on entering C or D, you will make him stay inside the loop until he inputs a valid response. You can also say repeat until, and note that the condition here is different because it's a repeat until, and here the response must be A or the response must be B. So it's... Um, the opposite condition if you want to use add, add a method into your algorithm you need to put the keyword method then give your method a name like my method if you have any parameters you put them um, in brackets just like you would in Java so here I have a parameter number one and it's an integer and then if it returns anything you put that on the end returns value so it does sort of look a bit like Java except you don't put the type of variable that it returns at the beginning you put it at the end of the top line of the method you'd have all your method lines inside and at the bottom return value and then at the right at the bottom of the method end method my method And then your main program, if you have a main program and then it calls a whole lot of methods, you would go begin main, put all your lines of code or your algorithm, and you could call your methods from here. So you would go output my method 10, for example, to use the method in the previous slide, and then at the bottom end main. 
if you um, want to see examples of how you would use all these constructs in algorithms, please watch the next video, which has a few examples in.